Well, on the way from home to this satsang hall, I found huge crowds, number of people. On inquiry, I have come to know that they are from this district, Anantapur district, in the state of Andhra Pradesh. I am also told that around 9,000 devotees have come from that one district. It is a record, it is a record by itself. From one single district, 9,000 people coming to Prashantinalayam is a record. I told their leader that they have to break their own records. Nobody can equal them. I congratulate them. I thank Bhagwan for having brought them to this place. Suddenly an idea flashed to me while talking to them on the way. Why not I speak on the subject appropriate to this event of Anantapur district devotees, 9,000, reaching Prashantanilayam, pilgrimage to Puttaparthi. Why not I speak on that topic? Then I thought it should be of general use as it would be preserved and recorded for posterity. I would like to put it this way. The topic of this morning is why here? Why here? That is the topic. Anybody who knows the history of this place, anybody who goes through the daily newspaper or TV will come to know that Anantapur district is the backward district. The backward district. It is a drought-stricken area. A very hot place indeed. Backward in every area. Socio-economic conditions. Geographical conditions. Climatic conditions. Industrialization. Rate of literacy. Per capita income. In all these aspects, take it as parameter, it is the most backward district. Then it struck to my mind, Baba, why have you chosen this district, this district as your birthplace? Why have you chosen this? They are wonderful cities, why not? You should have been there in Washington or Moscow or Dubai. Why not? Why not? Why? And even in India, cities like Delhi, Bombay, Calcutta, Hyderabad, of all these places, Anantapur, poor. Ananta, infinitely poor. Ananta meaning infinite. Why this? Then I thought I should speak on this subject. Why here? Let us come from the top. Our exploration, our inquiry. There are three levels. One, underdeveloped countries. Two, developing, developing countries. And third, developed countries. Developed, developing, underdeveloped. Three levels. This classification is based on economy, science, agriculture, technology, standard of living, etc. At the same time, as we just understand, there is a kind of search, eternal search, 
for a comfortable living man should be comfortable he should be luxurious he should have all kinds of conveniences a life of uh, excellence in every way in this pursuit of material benefits of material profits of material worldly standards many countries have have taken to science and technology they made thorough research in the field of science and technology as to reach moon what more you want as to invent pilot less aeroplanes therefore this is an age of science and technology no matter we agree or not this science and technology is limited to the mind its intelligence its intellect its imagination its hope spirit of adventure courage spirit to explore excavate and try to know the unknown things unravel the mysteries of the world challenge nature to prove the supremacy of man over nature that has been the path of the countries who advanced in science technology agriculture in all those fields on the other hand we have the east the eastern thought has gone beyond the mind beyond the mind to put it this way transcendental it transcended the limitations of mind and it has gone far beyond the imagination and the human thought that's what you call the level of consciousness or the level of the spirit or the level of the soul so one is in search of the spirit the east one is in search of the science the west all things of this material world is completely captured by the west very good we are comfortable this way because of their tireless efforts till this day at the same time the east has gone to a state beyond the mind a transcendental mind not relying on not based on thought but it has concentrated on intuition it's not eastern thought east is intuitive it has based on the intuition the inner strength the inner prompting the inner voice the inner consciousness mind gives the thought while the consciousness provides intuitive faculties intuitive capacities with the result the east has gone into the depth of intuitive investigation through meditation while experiments for science meditation for the spirit experiments of the science limited the mind while meditation of the spirit transcended the mind has gone beyond the mind this science and technology of the western mind 
has been changing from time to time, advancing, progressing, investigating, which is really positive, which is really a progressive mind, an advancing mind, about which we all feel proud of it. What it invented yesterday is going to be revised today. What it finds today has got to be improved upon tomorrow. So it's a continuous search, changing. Whereas the intuition, the transcendental stage of the spirit consciousness is changelessness. This is changeless. Eastern intuitive faculties, Eastern intuitive exploration, investigation is towards changeless nature, while science and technology is towards the change. One concentrates on the creation, science and technology, while the spirit or investigation of the consciousness thinks of the creator. Science and technology for creation that of the spirit relates to the creator. In other words, one is based on nature, the other is based on the divinity. That's the difference between the East and the West. Maybe many prophets, most of the spiritual knowledge, many of the saints and sages, seers are from the East, maybe. Because their thinking is towards this side. And we enjoy electricity, the fan, all facilities because of the Western scientific mind. Where do we stand now? We want both. Is there anything wrong? Nothing wrong. Because the Western science and technology will help us in the material world. The Eastern knowledge will help us in the spiritual world. Both are necessary, the material and the spiritual. The material for our living, the spiritual for our life. Material is the root, spiritual is the fruit of this tree. Both are necessary. Because if you concentrate on the root, material, it is useless. Any tree without fruit is useless. You cannot have the fruit without the root. Therefore, the root and the fruit are necessary, material and the spiritual. Science and technology and the transcendental knowledge, both are necessary. It is in this context, why here? India, though we call it, it has another name, Bharat. Bharat. People give so many meanings some say that there is one king by name Bharat. It is named after him, Bharat. Okay. But Baba gives another meaning. What does he say? Bha means light, effulgence, radiance. Rat meaning love. This is the country that loves the effulgence, the light. That is the divinity. He further said, Bha means Bhagavan, God himself. Rat, love. The country that loves, the, that loves God is Bharat. That is the definition given by Bhagavan. Why? Well, is it true? May not be true that you have no love for God. That is the definition. He has given another definition. There are three words. Bha, Ra, Ta. Three letters. Bha, Ra, Ta. Bha means Bhava, feeling. Ra is Raga, tune. Ta, Tala, the beat. Feeling, the tune and the beat. Bhava, Raga, Tala. A country that sings the glory of God with all Bhava, the feeling, the raga, the tune, and the tala, the beat. Singing in praise of God is Bharat, 
that's what baba said so why here because of this why here because of love for you why here because we sing your glory you i mean god that's the reason why many incarnations have taken birth in this land further baba also said engine is bharat rest of the compartments of the train are different countries this engine the spiritual power drives the rest of the countries towards the destination he further he said engine you will have all the energy there maybe you can use of some other any other means of drawing energy right from fuel or coal or electrical power whatever may be the power is generated in at the in the engine so driver will be there where there is energy driver is the creator god himself energy is life rest of the compartments are different nations and passengers we the lovely people seated there going towards the destination that is one reason he said another reason he said there are three personalities from the epic mahabharat one is dharmaja dharmaja other is bhima bhima the third one is arjuna three personalities dharmaja dharmaraja the eldest of five pandavas he stands for righteousness he stands for justice ready to lose life on the one side is bhima muscle power the other side is arjuna human intelligence baba says human intelligence and the muscle power have to depend upon central dharmaja the path of righteousness this dharmaja is bharat all those that believe in might in physical might belong to bhima kadar all those that rely on intelligence they belong to arjuna level why here these are the reasons then we come to the next level of all the states which are far better of all the districts which are better placed in every way why anantapur why the reason is this ananta meaning infinite pur we know pur infinitely pur that is the meaning on the face value but there is one epic by name bhagavata in bhagavata there is one chapter by name puranjano pakhyana puranjano pakhyana is one chapter in bhagavata where pura means city pura means city anantapura meaning a city of people city of people and there the chapter puranjano pakhyana also says human body is the city pura where the individual soul resides so anantapura in all these bodies in all these infinite number of human population animal population plant world animate inanimate all that have form and a name each one has his own in dwella so where is god now is infinite number of bodies infinite number of bodies ananta infinite pura the body since god is present in infinite number of bodies 
Anantapur is chosen for his birthplace. Anantapur. Good? Then we'll go to the next level. This Anantapur is close to a place now where Kia motor cars are manufactured. It is fair in the newspapers every day. That place is called Penugonda. This is close to Penugonda. What is the meaning of Penugonda? What does it mean? Penu means big. Konda means hill. Penugonda, big hill. Ah, so what? We should have a faith which cannot be shaken like a big hill, like a big mountain. So Penugonda represents our faith unshakable. Our faith that has to be steady, firm, established. Penugonda. Right? On the other side we have a place here by name Dharmavaram. What do you mean by Dharmavaram? Dharma, righteousness. Simple example. If you want to go to Madras, you have to board the train that takes you to Madras. If you want to go to Bombay, you have to board the train that takes you to Mumbai. You cannot mistake one for the other. God is righteousness, dharma embodied, dharma personified. Therefore, to reach God, dharma is the only way. To reach that dharma sarupa, that embodiment of dharma, dharma is the only path. To see the light, light is the only, light only should help you. To see the moon, moon's light should help you. Similarly, to reach God who is all dharma, righteousness, dharma is the only way. Therefore, dharma varam. Penugonda, unshakable faith. Dharma varam, the path of righteousness. Right? The next level. Why Puttaparthi? Why Puttaparthi? There are so many places. Putta means ant hill. Putta means ant hill. The mythology gives so many stories or anecdotes related to this ant hill. Ant hill has snakes inside snakes. People who were here in the earlier days, 40s, 1940s, they say they come across snakes, just we devotees move here freely. There's no recorded case of any snake bite, no. But number of snakes stay in ant hill. What are these snakes? The snakes adorn the neck of Lord Shiva. Lord Shiva, he has got the snakes around his neck. That is one. Number two, you also must have heard of Venkateshwara of Tirupati. People call him Palaji also. That Lord Venkateshwara stayed in an ant hill for some time, drawing the milk from a cow. So Venkateshwara has got a connection with the ant hill. Shiva has got connection with the ant hill. And there's another deity by name Subramanya. You have got his statue there. Ganesha Subramanya Swami. There at the entrance. That Subramanya also stayed in ant hill for some time. Subramanya, ant hill are related. Shiva, ant hill are related. Vengadeshara and Hill are related. And the composer of Ramayana, by name Valmiki, he sat in deep meditation. He did penance for a number of years that around him formed an ant hill. Ant hill got itself assembled 
formed around him because he remained static steady independence to god for number of years and he composed ramayana because of his previous history as venkateshwara as subramanya swami because of the history we can understand that he has got some kind of choice preference towards ant hill there is also ant hill in the village that has got an episode related to that therefore putta parthi is chosen by baba as his birth place then we come closer around this he has got a river by name chitravati chitravati river chitra means very peculiar very funny mysterious not predict predictable in other words our human mind our human mind is unpredictable one hour ago depression after one hour full of ego at one hour frustration after one hour full of pride that is the human mind when anyone praises you heart i am great if anyone says something wrong with you okay this is my life what can i do finish mind is chitra peculiar which goes on changing from time to time from season to season even to even moment to moment people say you sit for meditation but when we sit for meditation all useless thoughts come here the human mind is busier than chicago airport <laughs> for every 10 seconds one a flight will take off for every 10 seconds chicago so where is the our mind chicago airport full of thoughts all right if those thoughts are quite enjoyable fine quite romantic good but suddenly a certain thoughts of insult certain thoughts of humiliation certain thoughts related to the loss that we sustained those thoughts also come flights land take off land take off then the human chitravati human mind is chitra swami gives a number of examples about the human mind when i throw some rose flower at, at you you will feel anil kumar is respecting me is worshiping me you know that he has thrown this rose flower why because there is good understanding between you and me as ill luck would have it after some time when there is misunderstanding difference of opinion when i throw some rose flower at you what would you say this fellow has thrown the rose flower so that the thorn there will get into my skin and there i'll have some kind of injury then it will be septic and he knows i am diabetic and hand must be amputated ha <laughs> huh? so from worship to amputation same rose flower same two fellows what shall we do what shall we do that is the mind that is the mind human works like that it never tolerates any criticism it never accommodates any negative comment it always wants praises ah ah you are great man is that so you are greater have you realized today you are greatest since long back i have been that is the mind no one likes any contradiction you are wrong who said i am wrong do you think you are correct counteract we have no patience to listen we have no patience to think deep enough we cannot listen to any others 
point of view. I believe I am right. This dictatorial mind is a sick mind. Dictatorial mind is a sick mind. Dictatorial mind suffers from inferiority complex. Dictatorial mind lives in a sense of insecurity. People are proud, they want everything to go according to their taste because they live in insecurity. They have inferiority complex. Therefore, they pretend to be bosses and don't talk to people, not accessible to anybody. Good if they are like that, not worth it also. Not worth it. Therefore, my friends, human mind is such. It always arrogates. It is cunning. It is a pakka bluff master. It is political. Chitravati. Why? Let us take our own examples. So far within the Prashantanalayam, ah, devotee number one, class, class one devotees. The moment we come out of the Prashantanalayam, out, finish. Finish. Swami himself gave an example. To see our clothes will not be dirty, will not be spoiled. What we do is spread some turkey towel, napkin, sit on that. Good. After a discourse, shake it. Hurry home, go back. Similarly, all that we heard here, shake, shake it and go. Huh? That is the human mind. Chitravati, human mind. So far, Swami talks to you, he is God. When he doesn't look at you, I doubt. So far, all your desires are fulfilled, is nothing less than divine. When some of the desires are not fulfilled, let me find out some alternative. There is some secondary God, let me go. Huh? Human mind, human mind. It goes on dancing. That's why Baba says, mind is a mad monkey. Mad monkey. And a famous poem in Telugu says, two more points. Monkey is mad. Two, it is drunken. Third, its tail caught fire. So, it caught fire, drunken, mad enough. What will happen to the monkey? Goes on, la, 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 jumping. That is our mind. Chitravati. And then, Prashantilayam, next level. Shanti and Prashanti are different. Shanti is temporary. Prashanti is everlasting, eternal. Shanti is worldly. Prashanti is spiritual, godly. Shanti by material comforts. Supposing, why supposing? I am a coffee addict. If I take one cup of coffee, shanti. If I have one cup of ice cream, abba, shanti. <laughs> After three hours, ashanti, restlessness. Shanti has got its opposite, ashanti. Prashanti has no opposite. There is no aprashanti, no. Prashanti is prashanti. A permanent state of peace, a permanent state of supreme peace, prashanti. So, shanti is a temporary. If I have one house, shanti. Later after, I must have another house. Good. Later, I must occupy my neighbor's house also. Let me occupy. So, this state of ashanti or Shanti goes on oscillating, goes on vacillating, goes on harping, goes on jumping. Always. 
that is what is prashanti prashanti is different from shanti prashanti is eternal prashanti is spiritual prashanti is spiritual prashanti is divine prashanti is divine your birth right you are born with that prashanti whereas you acquire shanti and lose it something like i earn money i lose money i may win i may lose like that you may have shanti you may not have but prashanti you always have it is your birth right how do you know in deep sleep every day we experience in sleep we are in prashanti enjoying that supreme peace nobody worries in peace nobody worries in sleep nobody fights in sleep nobody argues in sleep no court no litigation no arguments aha prashanti peaceful sound sleep not sound meaning not snoring sound sleep deep sleep meaning without any dreams that all of us experience that prashanti is our daily experience in deep sleep therefore prashanti nilayam that deep sleep prashanti is experienced while we are awake at this place in front of bhagavan how do you know i am not dogmatic i am not fanatic when swami comes for darshan when you look at him what worries you have in your mind no worries no loans no debts no visa problem no air ticket reservation problem nothing you go on looking at him mind is switched off gone meaning you go beyond the mind beyond the mind is prashanti beyond the mind is bliss ananda so ananda the bliss prashanti supreme peace are beyond the mind that happens when we look at swami slowly he walks comes close to you stands in front of you what do you ask him finish you forget what you want to ask you forget to give the letter also that you have written throughout night ha huh? one person usually most of the people promise their wives at home don't worry i'll go i'm going to putta birthday i'll give your letter to swami he comes home he finds his letter in the pocket only not given to swami then she will what happened to letter she will ask i forgot to give <laughs> it is not his mistake mind is gone it is in supreme please supreme bliss and supreme peace of mind where the thought cannot go beyond where that is a state of desirelessness desirelessness without a goal without a purpose no hope no promise you are what you are that's all you are what you are not you were not you will be neither the past nor the future present when swami stands in front front of you do you think of the past do you think of the future no you think of him whether he will look at you or not whether you can catch his feet or not that is the only thing no past no future you live in the moment you live in the present that is life what is life life is in the moment what is life life is in the present who is god where is he now 
and here god is now and here he is in the moment he is not the past nor the future that is prashanti nilaya who is the lord of prashanti nilaya bhagwan sri sachya sai baba sachya sai baba in those days earlier the earlier period of my entry into prashanti nilaya quite new i heard some of the songs referring to swami as a lady as a woman oma oma saima oma saima are when he is there why do you call him a woman what is all this i didn't understand because i'm a newcomer not that i know very well today i know that i don't know at least thank god so i was wondering why oma oma saima oma santo are bhai swami understood it he looked at me <laughs> why some considered me as their mother so they say saima nothing wrong santoshi ma jai santoshi ma bhavani ma to some people i am their mother to some people i am their mother mata pita guru daivamu mari antayu nive the mother father teacher and god everything you only swami so some take me as their mother though say sai ma sai ma o divine mother jagatpati lord of the universe they take me as the master jagatpati jagatpati hari sai gopala you are the master of this universe brahmanda nayaka you are the leader of the whole world so he has got the masculine and the feminine approach together at the same time what you call ardha narishwara or androgynous god androgynous god ardha narishwara the masculine aspect and the feminine aspect both are in him when he cries when we go on crying he responds with that feminine aspect of saima when i go wrong you will take that masculine aspect and scold me publicly in front of 50000 people so yes that androgynous god ardhana arishwara nature in him this kind of feminine quality is ai the mother the masculine quality is baba the father sai baba baba the father i the mother sa the divine what do you mean by divine mother divine father what can there be divine father can there be divine mother what is it no sir you can be away from your mother for some time you cannot always be with your mother can you no you will be away from your mother for some time when you are grown up people may forget mother also you can always be you cannot always be with your father you have to leave him some stage or other for some time when you go to school or university when you go to office you have to be away, away from mother and father but when the god is in you who is both the mother and father can you be away from him impossible when god is in you the divine father and the divine mother within you can you be away from him impossible so he is divine father and mother sa plus ai plus baba sai baba that's what he said see very simple why here these are all the points and further he also said sai s a i sai what does it mean yes sachya sai baba a and i sachya sai baba and i are one what does it mean tat tvam asi tat tvam asi that thou art that thou art you are divine that's what it is yes yeah come on reverse it 
I A S. I and Sai Baba are one. Aham Brahma Asmi. I Brahma Asmi. I am the Brahman. I am God. I am divine. That is meaning of Sai. In a beautiful way explained, his name, the meaning of the me, of the name, the reason for his birth. All right. Why should he be born as a human being? People may ask, why? Why should he be born as a human being? He gave one point in his discourse. If buffalo is to think of God, it will think of God as a buffalo only. Yes. If a human being is think of God, he will think of another human being of higher nature, of higher power, who is omniscient, omnipresent, omnipotent. Thereafter, through his penance, with the help of his spirit of inquiry, he will go towards form to formlessness, from attribute to attributelessness, from name to namelessness, from a person to the cosmos. It's all question of spiritual journey. Therefore, my friends, I was just coming to this place, watching the crowds from Anantapur district, about 9,000. I thought, why can't I speak this morning on this topic? Why here? Thank you for being here for now. Thank you very much. Oh, Asatoma. Sadgamaya Tamasoma Jyotirgamaya Mrutyorma Amrutangamaya Jai Bolo Bhagwan